They built monumental cities, emerging from the forest trees and verdant hills of Central America. They cultivated a bellicose culture that exalted war as a sacred activity and worshipped dark and savage gods who demanded bloodshed through human sacrifices. Full of mysteries and intriguing stories, the Maya civilization was the largest and most powerful of the pre-Columbian civilizations, appearing around 2600 BC and reaching its zenith between the 8th and 9th centuries. They occupied the areas that today encompass southeastern Mexico and northern Central America. This area included the entire Yucatan Peninsula, Guatemala, Belize, as well as the western parts of Honduras and El Salvador. Thanks to their mastery of agriculture, the early inhabitants of Mesoamerica settled in sedentary agricultural societies, their main source of food being the cultivation of corn, beans, and squash. Among other cultures that adopted the agricultural lifestyle, such as the Olmecs, Mixtecs, and Aztecs, the Maya stood out for their rapid territorial expansion. The history of the Maya civilization is divided into three main periods. The Pre-Classic, Classic, and Post-Classic periods. During the Pre-Classic period, between 2000 BC and 250 AD, small villages began to grow and form cities. The political system was also constituted in a theopolitical form, that is, the belief that the king and other members of the kingship had divine descent and total authority over their subjects. The authority vested in the ruler was enormous, to the extent that the king exercised ultimate control over the administrative, economic, judicial, and military functions of politics, with his authority reinforced by public displays, rituals, and religion. The population's devotion to the ruler allowed the mobilization of hundreds of people in the execution of huge infrastructure projects and the construction of solid, detailed buildings. As the population increased, different sectors of society became more specialized and political organization became more complex. Hundreds of cities became connected in a web of political hierarchies. The wealthy segment of society multiplied with the development of a middle class consisting of artisans, priests, merchants, and soldiers. The Mayan calendar system originated in the pre-classical period and was developed to its maximum sophistication, registering the lunar and solar cycles, eclipses, and movements of the planets with great precision. The Mayan calendar was intrinsically associated with religious rituals and astronomy. The Mayan made meticulous observations on celestial bodies, registering the movements of the sun, moon, and stars. Although astronomy was primarily used by the priesthood to understand time cycles and project them into the future to produce prophecies, it also had some practical purposes, such as helping with planting and harvesting crops. During the classical period, between 250 and 900 AD, the Mayan reached the peak of large-scale construction and urbanism, achieving important intellectual and artistic development. The political organization of the classical period has been compared to that of classical Greece, with several city-states in a complex network of alliances and enmities. The largest cities had populations of 50,000 to 120,000 people, some of these strong cities fought violent wars with each other, as was the legendary rivalry between Tikal and Kalakmul. Both cities developed deep systems of alliances and vassals. Smaller cities that joined one of these networks gained prestige by their association with the capital city. This political context can be compared to feudal Japan of the Sengoku Jidai era. Founded in the 3rd century in what is now Guatemala, Tikal was the largest city in the Maya Empire and the capital of a conquering state that became one of the most powerful kingdoms of the ancient Maya. The sovereignty of Tikal was challenged by the also great city of Teotihuacan. The latter, around 378 AD, decisively subdued the rulers of Tikal, founding a new dynasty. 
There were also other sites with remarkable architecture and sculptures, such as the city of Chichen Itza in the Mexican state of Yucatan. Chichen Itza was one of the largest Mayan cities and may have had the most diverse population in the Maya world, a factor that contributed to its different architectural styles. During the classical period, the Mayan made progress in the study of mathematics and made official a writing system based on hieroglyphics. The Mayan writing system is one of the greatest achievements of the pre-Columbian inhabitants of the Americas, considered the most sophisticated and developed out of a dozen writing systems developed in Mesoamerica. Warfare was prevalent in the Mayan world. Military campaigns were organized for several reasons, including control of trade routes and tributes, raids to capture prisoners, and even the complete destruction of an enemy state. Mayan kings led as war captains, but if defeated, they could be captured, tortured, and sacrificed. Mayan states did not maintain standing armies, but any adult male was fit for military service. Warriors were highly disciplined and participated in regular training exercises, which included combat, strategy, and war dances. Some native chronicles suggest that women occasionally battled as well. The Mayan religion was based on the belief in a supernatural realm inhabited by several powerful deities. Most were cruel and violent in nature, constantly needing to be pampered with ceremonial and ritual offerings. For the Mayan, the gods were the personified forces of nature and could command rain, wind, fire, and other natural elements. The belief in supernatural forces influenced Mayan life including the simplest daily activities such as food preparation, trade, politics, and elitist activities. Mayan deities govern all visible and invisible aspects of the world. Dead ancestors were also worshipped, who were thought to be able to intercede for their living descendants in relations with the supernatural realm. Families buried their dead in the soil with offerings appropriate to the family's social status. As Mayan society developed and the elite became more powerful, the royalty developed their domestic shrines in their great pyramids, which came to shelter the tombs of their ancestors. The most important Mayan rituals culminated in human sacrifice. Blood was considered a potent source of nourishment for the deities, and the sacrifice of a living creature was an important blood offering. Generally, only high-status prisoners of war were sacrificed, Captives of lower status were used for labor. Sacrificing an enemy king was the most valued act. The sacrifice involved beheading the captive ruler. But this sometimes only happened after the victim had been tortured, beaten, scalped, burned, or disemboweled in various ways. Heart extraction, while the victim was still alive, was also a common practice, influenced by the rites of the Aztecs in the Valley of Mexico. The Mayans expressed their religious beliefs and other aspects of society and art, preferring the color green or blue-green. They placed great value on jade stones, carving sculptures and funerary masks that could weigh up to 4 kilograms. The Mayans had a long tradition of painting murals. The walls were covered with plaster, and polychrome designs were painted on the smooth finish. Most of these murals had not survived, but painted tombs have been excavated in Tikal and other locations. Among the best preserved murals was a series of life-size paintings at the archaeological site of Bonampak. The post-classic period lasted from 950 to 1539 AD, characterized by the abandonment of the major cities of the classical period. No single theory is universally accepted to explain this collapse of Mayan society, but there were probably several causes including wars, overpopulation, and severe environmental degradation, which led to the drying up of the main water sources that supplied the cities. Mass migrations considerably altered the landscape of the Maya world. Entire cities became empty and were rarely repopulated. Most of the population headed for higher ground, building new, smaller cities on hilltops, where the geography of the terrain allowed for greater protection against enemy attacks. The Mayan world was further impacted by the arrival of the Spanish in 1511, when a Spanish caravel sank in the Caribbean, and about a dozen survivors landed on the coast of Yucatan. 
they were captured by a Mayan lord, and most were sacrificed. From 1517 to 1519, three Spanish expeditions explored the Yucatan coast and fought several battles with the Mayan inhabitants. Even the brave Mayan warriors could not rival the military superiority of the Spanish, who had firearms, cannons, armor, and steel swords. The main Mayan cities were captured and plundered by the Spanish, whose great intent was to find gold to enrich their coffers. Noipaten was the last independent Mayan city to fall into the hands of the Spanish in 1697. Although the Spanish conquest weakened the Mayan culture, it was not extinguished. Mayan beliefs and language have stood the test of time. The 260-day ritual calendar is still in use in modern Mayan communities in the highlands of Guatemala and Chiapas, where millions of Mayan speakers inhabit the territory where their ancestors developed their civilization. The Inca civilization developed and thrived in some of the most inhospitable places on Earth. At the highest points, the air is so thin that it is difficult to breathe. Earthquakes and volcanoes were also part of the difficulties overcome by the Incas, making them quite skilled in the art of survival. The Incas formed the largest empire in pre-Columbian South America. Located mainly in the Andes Mountains, the empire encompassed present-day Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, and a large part of Chile, as well as the most southwestern tip of Colombia. The official language of the Inca Empire was Quechua, mainly spoken by indigenous peoples of South America. It predates the Inca Empire and is still spoken today by about 10 million people in different ethnic groups. Even without using the wheel, draft animals, iron metallurgy, and a writing system, the Incas managed to maintain one of the largest imperial states in history. Their architecture was monumental, with an extensive network of roads that reached every corner of the empire. They were also responsible for great agricultural innovations, which allowed food production in a difficult environment. In the Quechua language, the word Inca means ruler, a small ruling class of approximately 40,000 individuals. These ruled over a population of about 10 million people from different ethnic groups. The Spanish adopted the term Inca to designate all subjects of the empire, not just the ruling class. The origin of the Incas is shrouded in myths and legends that may contain some historical truth. Legend has it that the first Inca ruler was Manco Capac, a semi-legendary king and founder of the Kingdom of Cusco and the Inca lineage, to which all subsequent rulers would have some blood or spiritual connection. Around 1438, the Incas began a vast expansion under Pachacuti, conquering the present-day territory of Peru. Pachacuti reorganized the Kingdom of Cusco, and it is believed that he built the famous city of Machu Picchu in the eastern mountains of southern Peru. It is one of the country's major tourism attractions today. The Inca rule was established mostly in political negotiations. Pachacuti sent messages to the leaders of many villages, extolling the benefits of being part of his empire. He gave them lavish gifts, such as high-quality fabrics, and promised that they would be materially richer as his subjects. Most accepted the rule of the Incas, as the other option was subjugation by force. The leaders who refused were defeated in battle and executed without mercy. The families of some were spared, and their children taken to Cusco, where they learned the Inca systems of administration to later rule their native lands. The Incas referred to their empire by the name Tawansin Suyu, which means the Four Provinces, due to the territorial divisions of the empire. The four corners of the provinces met each other in Cusco, which had a similar role to a modern federal district. The separation of the provinces was probably created around 1460 during the reign of Pachacuti. The great leader Pachacuti had a son named Tupac Inca Yapanqui, who also became an important military leader. He was responsible for expanding the Inca Empire to Ecuador and Colombia, defeating the also strong Kingdom of Chimor, which previously dominated these territories. According to some historians, male and female roles were considered equal in Inca society. Women were sometimes allowed to own land and herds, as inheritance was passed down through the maternal and paternal side of the family. Men and women shared daily chores, 
caring for children, weaving, cooking, preparing fields for cultivation, and building houses. They also shared the herding of llamas and alpacas, the only large animals available for domestication in those lands. They were also a source of meat, milk, and warm wool for winter. The Inca's religious beliefs encompass several rite faiths based on a mythological system that influence all aspects of life, including work, festivities, and ceremonies. They were polytheistic and worshipped local and regional deities. They believed in reincarnation after death and imagined the next world as an earthly paradise with fields full of flowers and snow-capped mountains. For the Incas, death by fire or incineration of the corpse was taboo. Burning the body would cause the life force to disappear and threaten the passage of the deceased to the next world. This may have given rise to the custom of burying the dead in remote and hardly accessible places. Often, bodies were buried at high altitudes, such as on slopes or mountaintops. The climate of various sites chosen by the Incas to bury their dead allowed in some cases for their natural mummification of the bodies. Some specimens were found in highly preserved states, retaining facial features, hair, clothing, and even internal organs. The mummies found were mostly children, which revealed the cruelty of the Inca world. This proved that human sacrifices were often made, aiming to appease the wrath of the gods. La Doncella is one of the most famous Inca mummies, a 15-year-old girl who died supposedly in her sleep. Architecture was the most important Inca art. The most notable example is Machu Picchu, built by Inca engineers. The main Inca structures were made with stone blocks, whose fit was so perfect that a knife could not be inserted into the masonry. These constructions survived for centuries without the use of mortar to support them. Inca calendars were strongly attached to astronomy. Inca astronomers recorded the equinoxes, the solstices, and the cycle of the planet Venus, but they could not predict eclipses as happened in the Mayan calendar. The Inca calendar was essentially lunisolar. Two calendars were kept in parallel, one solar and one lunar. The Inca army was the strongest at the time. Any villager or farmer could be recruited as a soldier by virtue of the compulsory public service system. Any Inca physically fit and old enough to fight had to go to war. At the height of the empire, each section contributed to the formation of an army. The Incas had no iron or steel. Their weapons were basically composed of stones and wood. The most sophisticated were produced with copper or bronze. With such rudimentary equipment, the Incas could do little against the Spanish invasions that began in 1528. In July 1529, the Queen of Spain signed a letter that allowed the Spanish conquistadors, led by Francisco Pizarro and his brothers, to begin an expedition to conquer Peru and subdue the Incas. The goal was to sack the cities and seize the reserves of natural resources and gold pieces. The Spanish invaders carried with them new diseases such as influenza, smallpox, typhus, and measles. The Incas had few natural defenses against these, and a great epidemic spread throughout the Inca cities, killing thousands of people. The Incas themselves entered a civil war over the right of succession to the throne, which further weakened the empire. In November 1532, Francisco Pizarro captured Atahualpa, the last Inca emperor. Atahualpa was imprisoned and forced to collaborate with the Spanish. He gave the Spaniards enough gold to fill the room where he was imprisoned, and twice that amount in silver. Atahualpa kept his promise during a rescue attempt, but Pizarro tricked him into refusing to release the Inca after he received the fortune. The Spanish executed Atahualpa, and the Inca Empire began to disintegrate. Many ethnic groups ruled by the Incas welcomed the Spanish invaders as liberators and established alliances with them to share dominance of the resources and mine the land. In 1572, the last Inca fortress was conquered, and the last ruler, Tupac Amaru, was captured and executed. This ended the resistance to the Spanish conquest under political authority of the Inca state. When Pizarro and the Spanish subjugated and controlled the continent, they forcibly converted many to Christianity, 
claiming to have educated them according to the One True Religion. The Spanish colonial officials brutally enslaved the natives. One member in each family was forced to work in the gold and silver mines. The epidemics brought by the Europeans devastated the Inca people and their culture. Today, the descendants of the Incas live in the Andes and make up almost half of the Peruvian population, whose traditions maintain the pride of having once formed a mighty empire. Renowned for their architectural wonders and monumental cities, their brutal warriors and bloody rituals, the Aztecs established a gigantic empire that bloomed in the very center of what is now Mexico. The origins of the Aztec peoples are clouded in many mysteries and legends. Historians found evidence that sometime around 1065 AD, there occurred a mass migration of several indigenous tribes towards the Valley of Mexico. Their exact reasons remain a mystery, but their answers may lie in an ancient legend passed down from generation to generation among the Aztecs. The legend said that once upon a time, seven different tribes lived in a place called Chicomotztoc, the place of the seven caves. They all shared the same language, which later became known as the Nawa language. For unexplained reasons, the tribes began a major migration and settled in a mythical paradise called Atzlan, in which all the tribes were able to thrive. The tribes were Xochimilca, Tlawica, Tlaxcala, Tapaneca, Chalca, and Mexica. For historians, the estimated location of Atzlan would be in northwestern Mexico or the southwestern United States. The people of Atzlan began to call themselves Aztecs, a name in which the Nawa language means people of Atzlan. Gradually, some tribes became more numerous and powerful than others, and a despotic elite ruled the lands and people of Atzlan with an iron fist. To escape their oppressors, some tribes fled Atzlan in search of new territories to colonize, and the Mexica tribe was responsible for spreading Aztec culture, building the main Aztec cities in Mexico. Still, according to legend, in circa 1323, the Mexicas had a sight of an eagle perched on a spiny cactus, devouring a snake. The vision was an indication of the place where they should build their settlement. The Mexicas built the city of Tenochtitlan on a small swampy island in Lake Texcoco, the inner lake of the basin of Mexico. The Mexicas' royal dynasty was chartered when Acampichtl was appointed the first king of Tenochtitlan. Nonetheless, the Mexicas were still subject to the control of the kingdom of the Tapanecas, to whom they were expected to relinquish their warriors and pay tribute. After long years of servitude and steep taxation, the Mexicas allied with other tribes in the region and conducted a violent war against the Tapanecas, who were decimated and their cities captured. Following this victory, Tenochtitlan ultimately became the dominant city-state in the Valley of Mexico. The Mexicas and their allies helped the foundation on which the Aztec Empire was built. The Aztec society was divided by social classes, with the nobility being the most privileged class, with the right to wear particularly elegant garments and consume luxury goods, as well as possessing land and commanding the workforce of the plebes. Most of the powerful nobles were called lords and had ownership control of royal estates or houses. They were allowed to serve in the highest offices in the government or as military leaders. The second social class was formed by the peasants and workers in general, who, by their labor and food production, generated an extremely useful source of income for the city. Certain citizens of the second class did not own land and, instead, worked directly for a lord of the nobility, thereby securing the right to live on his land. This system was quite similar to the fiefdoms of medieval Europe. In many pre-Columbian peoples, Aztec society was largely modeled on the agriculture of corn. The humid climate in the Valley of Mexico, with its many lakes and swamps, made for intensive farming. The main crops, besides corn, were beans, squash, peppers, and amaranth. Another important method for agricultural production in the valley was the construction of chinampas, which were man-made expanses of farmland created from alternating layers of mud from the lake bottom, vegetable matter, and other vegetation in which could be cultivated throughout the year. 
As Tenochtitlan became a large urban center, aqueducts brought water to the city from springs on the lake shore, and a system was laid down to collect human waste for use as fertilizer. The infrastructure made Tenochtitlan a city comparable to ancient Rome in sophistication and architectural innovations. As capital of the Aztec Empire, Tenochtitlan was situated where today's Mexico City is located today. It was built according to a fixed plan and centered on the Great Pyramid of Tenochtitlan, which towered 50 meters high above the city. The temple was dubbed Huayi Teocali and was sacred to the gods of war, rain, and agriculture, each of whom had a shrine at the top of the pyramid with separate staircases. The Aztecs were particularly fond of arts and crafts. They highly esteemed artistic endeavors as a sign of intellectuality. The fine arts covered writing and painting, singing and composing poetry, carving sculptures, and producing mosaics. Some craftspeople were devoted to making fine ceramics, manufacturing intricate plumage for warriors and nobles, and working metals, including copper and gold. The Aztecs used two simultaneous calendars, a 260-day ritual calendar and a 365-day solar calendar. Each day had a name and a number in both calendars. The two days combined once in 52 years. The monthly rituals took place in the entire population, as the ceremonies were performed in each house, in the temples, and the main sacred enclosure. The Aztec religion was primarily organized around the practicing of rituals dedicated to a pantheon of distinct deities and arranged on specific dates in the calendar. Like the other pre-Columbian peoples, the Aztecs were polytheistic and made religion one of the cornerstones that underpinned their culture. A pivotal feature of their religion was the offering of sacrifices to the deities as a means of expressing gratitude or payment for the continuation of the cycle of life. Many festivals entailed different dance forms, as well as the retelling of mythical narratives by deity impersonators and sacrifices in the form of food, animals, and human victims. For the Aztecs, death was paramount to the perpetuation of creation, and both gods and humans bore the responsibility of sacrificing themselves to allow life to continue. Humans were regarded as being responsible for the ongoing rebirth of the sun, as well as paying for the earth for its fertility. Whereas human sacrifices were performed by almost all pre-Columbian peoples of Mesoamerica, the Aztecs pushed this custom to an unparalleled level. For the consecration of the Great Pyramid of Tenochtitlan in 1487, for example, Aztec and Spanish sources reported that 80,000 prisoners were sacrificed over four days. This figure is deemed by many scholars to be exaggerated, but other estimates put the number of human sacrifices at between 20,000 victims each year. The empire reached its peak in 1519, just before the appearance of a ragtag group of Spanish conquistadors led by Hernán Cortés. The Spanish teamed up with the city-states that opposed the Mexicas and embarked on an all-out and violent war against the inhabitants of Tenochtitlan. After the downfall of the city on August 13, 1521, and the capture of the Emperor Cuauhtémoc, the Spanish founded Mexico City on the ruins of Tenochtitlan. Following the arrival of the Europeans in Mexico and their successful military campaigns to conquer the Aztec cities, the native populations dwindled dramatically. In large part, this was the outcome of the epidemics of different types of viruses brought to the continent, against which the natives had no immunity. Smallpox outbreaks ravaged the population of Tenochtitlan, a major factor in the city's collapse. As the superstructure of the Aztec Empire was destroyed in 1521, the Spanish exploited the city-states in which the empire was built to control the indigenous populations through their local nobles. Said nobles swore loyalty to the Spanish crown and converted to Christianity, in return for which they were recognized as nobility by the Spanish crown. Nobles acted as brokers to levy taxes and harness labor for their new lords, helping establish Spanish colonial rule. For the 19th century, the portrayal of Aztecs as uncivilized barbarians was superseded by romanticized versions with a high-developed culture that rivaled the ancient European civilizations. The Aztec culture and history were foundational to the formation of the Mexican national identity. To this day, 
one of Mexico's main military coats of arms features a golden eagle sitting perched on a spiny cactus and devouring a rattlesnake. The depiction is ingrained in the legend where the Aztec people would know where to build their city by spotting an eagle eating a snake on top of a cactus. The image has been an early symbol of Mexican politics and culture for centuries. At its zenith, the Aztec culture had a complex and rich mythological and religious tradition, as well as impressive architectural and artistic achievements. The heritage of the Aztecs resonates in Mexico today in many forms. Archaeological sites are dug up and open to the public, and their artifacts are exhibited in museums with pride. Aztec place names and words still permeate the vocabulary of Mexicans, thereby continuing to keep alive the memories of these remarkable people.